Hello. What's going on guys? Welcome to the next Joshinator video. Now I realized I haven't made a video game related upload in forever, so today we're throwing it back to Dark Souls Remastered. You'll notice I made this exact same video a while back, but I've since played through the game three times with different builds, and as such, some of my opinions have changed. Before we start, I have a few things to say though. Number one, much of the footage you will see is of my latest playthrough in which I wielded the Black Knight Halberd for nearly every boss. I know it's OP, I probably would have died twice as much without it, but I've already played through the entire game with only the Drake Sword, so don't mock me. Number two, people are going to say I copied Democracy. But last I checked, he hasn't trademarked the subject matter, and I only have about 106 subscribers at the time of making this, so don't worry, I don't think I'm doing his videos any harm. And finally, number three, this video took a shit ton of work to edit and put together, so I'll probably never do it again. So if you like what you see, I would greatly appreciate it if you dropped a like. Number 25 is and will always be Pinwheel. The dude's a joke on every level. Not only does he die in about 5 seconds as long as you're above soul level 10, but he also poses zero threat to the player during those 5 seconds. I've seriously only seen Pinwheel land a successful attack once or twice. He spends the rest of the fight simply floating around, occasionally cloning and waiting for you to put him out of his misery. Promptly do so and you'll be rewarded with the Tomb of the Giants. How exciting. Number 24 is the Asylum Demon. Of all the Souls tutorial bosses, this one is undoubtedly the easiest. First off, his minuscule health bar rivals even that of Pinwheel. Admittedly, he does do high damage for early game, but most of the attacks are well-telegraphed hammer swings and pathetic ass crashing. Standing behind him while he winds up his attacks pretty much guarantees success, so I highly recommend that. Some people like that this one is nice and simple, but for me, the Asylum Demon will always be that lame dude who pops up three times in the game. Number 23 is the Moonlight Butterfly. Being that I'm a melee user, this fight is extremely annoying. Is it difficult? Not in the slightest. It just takes a hell of a lot longer because you can only hit the boss every few minutes when it decides it's just as bored as you are and proceeds to land on the bridge on which you fight it. The only real danger here is poorly timing your rolls and getting pelted with spells. If you're too reckless, you'll run out of Estus quickly. The aesthetics are definitely there for this one, but otherwise this is a boring, easy fight. Number 22 is the Taurus Demon. He's likely to be the second boss you fight and he's just about as bland as his predecessor. Just another big dude with a mace that's easy to dodge behind and mash away at. The only difference here is that the arena is extremely linear, adding the threat of plunging to your death. If you're scared of that, you can always cheese this boss and kill him with plunging attacks from the Archer Tower, but why do that when he's just as easy to kill otherwise? Number 21 is the Iron Golem. With a guy this massive, you'd expect at least mild difficulty, but very few moves by the golem put you in any real danger unless of course you stand perfectly still. Not only is he slow and inaccurate, but the dude also staggers for a good 5 minutes once you get him to around half health, giving you plenty of time to finish the job. If you walk into this fight with the Black Knight Halberd like I did, you should be embarrassed to die to this gargantuan klutz. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Moving on. Number 20 is Crossbreed Priscilla. This is a boss that never really clicked for me because she has an interesting mechanic of turning invisible which forces the player to track her by her footsteps in the snow. But this also makes it incredibly easy to snap her out of it and just spam her with very few consequences. Never did I find it necessary to learn this boss's moveset. Just recklessly dodge until you're behind her and beat away. Worst case scenario, you'll kill her so fast that you actually feel kind of bad. Number 19 is Dark Sun Gwendolyn. This is a gimmick boss in that it's only difficult if you don't understand how the game wants you to play it. The strategy here is quite simple. Hide behind the pillars while Gwyn spams you with magic, then sprint to the boss and deal as much damage as you can. This will prompt the boss to teleport further down the seemingly infinite hallway. Just rinse and repeat. Pretty simple boss if you ask me. Just don't get greedy like I did and you shouldn't have any problems. Number 18 is the Gaping Dragon. They should use this monster in those abstinence videos that they show you in the 6th grade. If I saw this thing back then, I would probably avoid anything sexual for the rest of my life. Jokes aside, this gigantic toothy vagina lizard actually does pose somewhat of a threat, 
being that it has an ass crash attack that sometimes tracks you, sometimes doesn't, and a charge attack that can easily obliterate any early game vigor level. I like to cut the tail ASAP. Once you do this, it can't really hit you there, and you can safely dish out damage from behind. Number 17 is the Centipede Demon. This is more of a fight against the camera than anything else. My favorite strategy here is to wait helplessly for the boss to peacefully stride through the lava to get to me. If you get really unlucky, the colossal insect will just stand there and smack you with its arms from afar. If it does eventually confront you face to face, abandon all hope of seeing what the hell your character is doing and repeatedly spam R1. Somehow this strategy works. Just roll through the jumping attack and heal whenever you find yourself being hit by anything else. Centipede Demon is another really annoying boss, but it isn't really that difficult if you know what you're doing. Number 16 is the Stray Demon and Demon Fire Sage. I count these two together because they're practically the same thing, and you know what? They're both basically a reskin of the Asylum Demon with added damage and some annoying AoEs that seem to manifest out of nowhere after they attack. This can easily lead to your death unless you keep your distance. They're still quite manageable though, just pick your openings and watch out for their infamous ass crashing. Still not too difficult. Number 15 is Seath the Scaleless. This boss almost seems impossible until you realize that in order to do any damage to it, you need to shatter this random ass crystal in the corner of the map. When it comes to Seath himself, the fight is pretty simple. Just strafe around him in circles and attack a tentacle every now and then. He doesn't even use half of his moves unless you're standing in front of him, making for another dull dragon encounter. Seath the Scaleless? More like Seath the Spineless. <laughs> I know it's not very original, but I try. Number 14 is Ceaseless Discharge. I've always wondered what it would feel like if an enormous fire abomination ejaculated on me. Thanks to this boss, I now know, and it's pretty fucking awful. I hate this guy. He spams you with difficult to dodge attacks and gives you a limited window to attack back. Someone needs to give this guy a vasectomy so I can avoid the wrath of his discharge and move on to better things. Oh, wait, we're in the demon ruins, aren't we? That doesn't exist. To beat Ceaseless Bitch Charge, I recommend kindling the shit out of the nearest bonfire and just tanking the hits to deal damage back. He's pretty slow moving, so you can usually heal in between his attacks and then deal damage. But still, fuck this boss. Number 13 is the Capra Demon. This is one of the two bullshit bosses in Dark Souls Remastered. The demon himself isn't quite that bad, but try walking into a tiny arena with two overly aggressive dogs along with the actual boss, which all proceed to spam you immediately upon noticing you. There's a small staircase leading to the ledge on the far end of the arena. Try to use this to recover health back if you make it that far. As soon as you kill the dogs, the fight is pretty much a cakewalk, as the Capra Demon's moveset is quite pathetic and he staggers very easily. The difficult part is getting rid of the damn dogs. Number 12 is the Great Grey Wolf Sif. Normally I don't condone killing dogs, but when you're trapped by a fog gate facing a 10 foot tall mutt with a greatsword in his mouth, I can excuse it. Sif isn't especially dangerous as long as you remain under his front legs, but he does have that one double spin move that always seems to hit me and does massive damage. If this happens to you, your fate rests with the RNG gods as to whether Sif does a follow up attack or lets you back off to heal. If you get the latter, you should be able to recover in time to get back into the fray. Number 11, Bell Gargoyles. I used to find this boss fairly difficult. Then I tried the Black Knight Halberd. This makes all the difference considering the fight is only challenging if you're battling them both at once. Level your weapon as much as possible and try to take out the first gargoyle as quickly as you can. The last thing you want to be doing is trying to dodge noxious fire breath while trying to take on the axe wielder. But I understand that not everybody gets the Black Knight Halberd on their first drop, and that's why this boss sits in just outside of the top 10. Number 10 is the Bed of Chaos. I bet this boss is good friends with the Capra Demon. They make a great duo since they're both comprised completely of flaming bullshit. Oh, but Josh, the boss saves your progress. Get good, scrub. That may be true, but the only reason it saves your progress is because the devs know that you're going to die at least a few times and they acknowledge their shit game design when it comes to the bitch of chaos. 
There's no real sure way to avoid this thing's enormous swinging arms, so just do what I did and sprint your way to the finish as fast as you can. This boss is broken, I hate it, probably more than any other boss in the entire series. Number 9 is Chaos Witch Quaylag. This is another boss where high damage weapons help you a lot. When I faced this boss on my most recent playthrough, she belched so much fucking lava that I struggled to find safe footing to attack her from. And don't let her mesmerizing rack distract you. Remain in front of her for too long and you'll get singed by rapid sword swings with questionable hitboxes. This fight is, after all, against a half spider half naked woman and it feels just like that. Not too pleasant, but not too dreadful either. Number 8, Four Kings. This is another DPS test. The fight itself isn't really that difficult unless you're fighting more than one at the same time. You can avoid this by having a high level of vigor and recklessly swinging through most of the king's attacks. You will want to watch out for the grab though. The animation is just long enough to give another king the time to spawn and it eats a good chunk of your health away. The difficulty of the four kings also depends heavily on how early you attempt to beat them. I recommend finishing Anorlando first for the best results. Number 7 is Gwyn, Lord of Cinder. Can you parry? If so, then this fight is relatively simple. If you can't parry, learn to do it, because Gwyn is absolutely brutal if you face him the old-fashioned way. Even if you don't have much parrying experience, it's really not that hard to learn. Gwyn's attacks are highly telegraphed, giving you plenty of reaction time, and even on my first playthrough ever, I beat this boss on my third try. Considering I hadn't used parrying for anything prior to that, this boss can't possibly be that challenging. It is certainly epic regardless. Number 6 is the Sanctuary Guardian, the first DLC boss on the list still clocks into the top 10. This dude reminds me of Teostra from Monster Hunter, but the Sanctuary Guardian uses lightning instead of fire, and tends to prance around the arena like a gazelle in a stampede. I don't find this boss to be too difficult, but it is unpredictable, and greed is punished heavily here. The Guardian is an Estus Drainer for sure, and is very fast, but only a mild pain in the ass if you ask me. Number 5 is Grave Lord Nito. People tell me that they found this boss to be easy. Good for you. Doesn't matter to me though because my personal opinion is that Nito is a fucking dreadful nightmare. Immediately upon entering the arena, you have to take a dive into the pit of despair, decimating half your health. Don't bother healing yet though, because before long you'll be promptly notified of an incoming anal probe from below, which also makes you toxic. The fight only gets better from there as you're raped by an unrelenting swarm of skeletons as you attempt to avoid being staggered into oblivion. Nito's only redeeming factor is his AoE. It temporarily kills the skeletons for you and allows you to get some hits. But besides that, this boss makes me want to uninstall, grab my PS4, and jump out of a 5 story window with it in my hands. Number 4 is Knight Artorius. One of the most epic fights in the game is also rightfully one of the most difficult. This is the one battle in the game that actually feels like an epic duel between two skilled knights. Honestly, I don't find Artorius' attacks to be that difficult to dodge, he's just occasionally hard to read. Don't be greedy against him, this is a very much an endurance fight and you need every Estus you got. Also, there's a caveat to the fight that I didn't know about during my first playthrough. Artorius backs off to buff himself every few minutes and I originally thought that that was unavoidable. It absolutely is. Run in there and stagger him out of that. The fight becomes a million times harder if he buffs and gets increased attack damage. Number 3 is Ornstein and Smo. This might be the only gank fight in the entire series that I fully approve of. These two enemies have the perfect attributes to counter one another and the fight also forces you to make an important decision. Which one do I kill first? I recommend Ornstein. He's faster and much easier to deal with alone while Smo struggles to keep up. I will admit that the fight does still feel heavily RNG dependent. I had one attempt in which Smo would not stop doing that obnoxious charge attack. I hate that fucking move. Anyways, once you kill Ornstein, you basically have to kill a buffed Smo. This is much more manageable with how telegraphed his swings are. Just remember to block or iframe the ass crash AoE because that can leave you open for a finishing blow from the hammer. This is probably the most infamous boss in the entire game, and I still love it, even though it can be a bit frustrating at times. Number 
Number two is Black Dragon Calamite. This is the one boss in the game that I still feel like I have no idea how I ever killed it. I also don't know how I did it on my first try in my most recent playthrough. Calamite is fast, has a varying move set, and there really isn't a single safe place to stand. You have to know your enemy and know when to time your dodge for every single move. Calamite also has a grab attack that allows the boss to deal double damage to you. If you're hit by this, you may as well jump off a cliff because yeah, you're as good as dead. On top of all this, Calamite has one of the largest health bars of any boss in the game. I'm still bad at this fight after beating it three times, so good luck is about all I can really say. Number one is Manus, Father of the Abyss. Are you surprised? If you are, I'll assume you haven't fought this guy. Take every quality of Calamite and multiply it by 100. Honestly, the most difficult thing about this fight is the fact that you're given hardly any openings to attack or heal. This man is relentlessly aggressive. I found myself running out of Estus during all 1500 attempts. But I'll never forget the first time I beat Manus. I was out of Estus by the time he was down to a quarter health and basically was forced to finish the entire fight without making a single mistake. It's probably the most proud moment I've ever felt in Dark Souls. My gloating aside, there is actually a strategy I can recommend to melee users. Don't dodge around him, dodge away. Normally you don't want to do that versus bosses in the Souls series, but you're less likely to get caught up in his ravenous combos, and he often uses more telegraphed attacks if you're a little ways away from him. Don't stand too far away though, or you'll get pelted with spells and die immediately. Well guys, that's going to be it for this video. I don't want to talk too much because otherwise it's going to take 20 hours to upload this damn video. But as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next video. Happy soul farming and good luck.